Thanks for joining us here on the Bearcat Sports Network. We're catching up with McKendree head football coach Mike Babcock and coach this past Saturday in Lehman Field. It was homecoming. Things didn't look good for about the first 56, 57 minutes, but the Bearcats found a way. Two scores in the final minute 26 of the ball game. A dramatic finish. Sent the homecoming faithful home happy 20-16. to 16. Talk about the resilience of your team in that game. Uh, I mean, you talk about a four-quarter game uh, and taking all four quarters into account. You know, it, uh, it was definitely a fun win. Um, probably not how I drew it up or not how we coached it uh, throughout the week. But at the end of the day, I was really proud of the guys just to continue to push through the entire game. And my hope is that now they truly realize that a game really isn't over until that final uh, that final bell. So um, at the end of the day, nice win. Bearcats get the ball with 329 left, have to go 86 yards for a score, get some pass completions, get a penalty that puts them in good field position, catch drive down, Elsie Burke throws a pass in the end zone, Dalton Balster uses every ounce of his energy and strength to rip the ball away from the defender, an 11-yard touchdown catch to start the comeback. Then the Bearcats try the onside kick and look for a second that McHenry might get that. They have all three timeouts, hold the three and out, and then a gentleman I know we have not used his name yet during our, our discussions this year, John Alvin, breaks through the middle of the line and blocks a punt. Talk about how big a play that was. Uh, I mean, obviously huge. You know, at, at this point, especially just the momentum change when it comes to instead of having a punt and getting the ball, let's say, at the, you know, minus 20 and have to go 80 yards, you know, for a score. Now, all of a sudden, we have a block punt and have to go three yards for a score. Um, just completely changes everything and, and John Alvin, uh, he's a backup linebacker, uh, you know, pretty much what he does is special teams and uh, to have him come in and make a great uh, a great play for this team is, is kind of just shows you what you need to do in order to be that blue collar kind of guy, a guy that might not necessarily be you know, the starter, the All-American, or anything like that, but he has his job, he has his assignment, and you know what? When he does it successfully, big things happen, and then you talk about a big game and uh, for him and uh, just a momentum switch and uh, definitely a nice deal. And just off that one play, he was GLBC Special Teams Player of the Week, but then we look ahead two plays later, Elsie Burke lofts a pass into the end zone, towards the back of the end zone for Skylar Paulson, makes a spectacular catch, cradles the ball with one hand as he falls to the ground, to complete the comeback. Skylar Paulson's a guy that's only caught six balls this year, but has three touchdowns, uh, a big moment there for him. Yeah, you know, a great, great play by both Elsie and uh, uh, Skylar. Uh, it just got enough. There was a defensive player that came late over the top and, and almost got a tip on that ball, uh, you know, but a one-handed grab by uh, Skylar to kind of finish it out and uh, definitely, um, definitely a big way to finish that game. Elsie only completed 10 passes in the ballgame, three for touchdowns, really stepped up in that fourth quarter, uh, really showed his leadership skills there. Cheyenne Edwards, another 100-yard game for him. Talk about that duo in the backfield. Well, I think, you know, if I could just get Elsie to every one of his completions, every third of his completions have a touchdown, I think it would be, <laughs> you know, really, really good, especially if he can complete more balls. So, uh, but no, Elsie's done a really nice job, um, especially in the run game, too. He's had some really nice runs, you know, uh, when we are zone reading and, and being able to pull it and, and make some guys miss on the perimeter. He does give us a, a, a great factor in the run game uh, when he has the ball. Um, but also Shaheen. Shaheen's a workhorse. You know, he had another 100-yard game, uh, ended up averaging roughly about four yards a carry. Um, does a real nice job for us up front. So having both of those guys back there in the run game, I think really does have a good dynamic and hopefully just keep it going. The thing lost in the way everything played out towards the end of the ball game was the performance of the defense, the Bearcats really came up big at times. You look, uh, there were a couple of situations in the third quarter, especially St. Joe's had a couple of short fields to work with. McKendry limited them to two field goal attempts. Three big sacks in the fourth quarter helped flip field position a little bit, and that was big to help field the comeback as well. Absolutely. You know, when you're in a tight game and all of a sudden your offense gives up the ball, you know, inside the 25-yard line with only 25 yards for their team to go, uh, that could be the game right there. And our defense really stepped up, forcing the three and out, forcing the field goal. Uh, so now instead of 14 points, it's only six, and obviously that's that's the biggest difference in the game. But obviously later on in the game with a couple big plays, even after the missed uh, onside kick coming back out with a three and out, 
um, and really only about 20 to 25 seconds off the clock because we called timeout um, is huge. And then finishing the game with an interception by Blake Benoist uh, just to kind of seal the deal is really kind of indicative of how our defense played, especially that second half um, of just playing normal Bearcat football and uh, Obviously, good things happen. Bearcats accomplished objective number one for the week was to go 1-0. and They did just that, the big homecoming win, to get back over 500. Now 2-2 two and two in the conference. Another big one this coming Saturday at home against Missouri S&T. And that's a team, right now you look at the numbers they're putting up this year, it's a team that's very solid offensively, averaging close to 38 points a ball game. And we saw that firsthand last year, a team that put up almost 500 yards against the Bearcats in a tough loss in Rolla, Missouri last year. Yeah, I think this is a, a very good team. You know, offensively, you look at it, they're huge up front. I mean, they've got, you know, some linemen that are over 300 pounds, over 6'5". Uh, they're very big up front and can run the ball, but uh, they've got a very good quarterback. He's really good at um, his completion percentage. You know, he's got high touchdown to low interception ratio, so he knows what to do with the football. I think he does a nice job there and then I think they have uh, one or two of the best wide receivers in the league in my opinion. Uh, Braxton Graham I think is a, a heck of a, a football player. He, he made us um, he did some really nice things against us last year and uh, he's having one of those type of years again this year and he's only a sophomore and so um, I think our, our hands are definitely full defensively with this type of offense this week. Uh, hopefully we can uh, control them and, and be able to uh, get them off the field. On the flip side, the Missouri S&T defense, it's a group that looks like it's gotten better each week. It's taken the field last week, only giving up 16 points and a 65-16 homecoming win for the Miners at home against Lincoln, a, a team that's going to come at you from all angles as well. Absolutely. You know, they're a flex defense, uh, so it's a little bit different than what we've been seeing all year. Um, you know, and they do a very nice job of it. Play a lot of man-to-man -man in the back half, and so what do we need to do? We need to win the one-on-one -on -one perimeter game, uh, need to be able to throw and catch, uh, but also up front, we need to be able to block and, and stay on our guys quite a bit. I mean, this is a great defense coming in. I mean, they're number one in the conference in total defense, number one in the conference in sacks, number one in the conference in interceptions. And so this is, a like I said, just a great defense. And when you combine that with what they do offensively, I mean, this is a very good team coming into our place. You look at the last three meetings between these two teams, and this these are games that have literally gone down to the final couple of minutes Tough 10-point loss a couple of years ago at their place. The Cats get the win the last time they were here at Lehman Field by three points. Missouri s and with a late comeback. And then last year, a game that really wasn't decided until the final possession. Are you expecting more of the same on Saturday? <laughs> well, I mean, as a coach, uh, I mean, as a coach, you hope to uh, beat them by quite a bit. But I'll be honest with you, with, with the way that Missouri s and is playing, they are well coached. They are uh, well organized. They do a lot of great things. Um, it will take, you know, probably another all four quarter game. And I think that's really what you saw last year is, is us starting early and, um, you know, unfortunately not keeping that momentum for the rest of the game really did hurt us. And obviously we lost the game last year. So um, being able to just work all, all four quarters, all 60 minutes of football and, uh, you know, hopefully come away with the win. Coach, good luck on Saturday. Appreciate it. Joe Zidlow will have the call live on the Bearcat Sports Network at glvcsn.com slash McHendry. The pregame show starts at 1245. And don't forget to follow us, all our sports on mckenzckbearcats.com.